for the beast from the east. He doesn't seem to have turned up today, does he? It's only about two degrees. Right, that's enough time lapse, let's get to work. Just get into the unit and it looks like the beast from the east has arrived. It started snowing. Oh, I need to clean my windows. Anywho, the plan is we're here now. We'll see what the snow is like when we leave the unit. But while I am here, the best way to keep warm for me is to lay perfectly still whilst doing some welding in a tank. Nah, no, it's not going to work. So I'm going to put my gloves and hat and welding mask on and everything to stay warm in here. Maybe even put the heater on. Maybe even put the heater on. But yeah, I've clamped on the inside of here, I don't know if you can see, to clamp the backing on. And what we're going to do is start to weld on the cooling jacket on the t'other side, like petal. So we shall see if this backing is sufficient enough to prevent any coking coming through the stainless. I'll just do a little run of maybe about hmm, six inches or so and we'll have a look. Right, we had a quick go at it. But I'm not comfortable and I was slow, so I put a lot, a lot of heat into that weld. And if I grab the torch and we have a look on the inside, there's a little bit of coking coming through on the back, two places. Now the sheet of copper wasn't clamped perfectly to the back of that. So I'll reposition that so I'm making sure that I am backing tightly the bit of weld that I'm going for. And we'll give it another whirl, but I think we can do this. second attempt on the other side is better, there's less coking, I got a longer run. I tried three different settings on the, on the TIG welder. I tried pulse at one pulse per second, 35% background. And then I tried at 33 pulses per second. And I had to bump it up to 70 plus amps. It looked like it was doable, but I was just not comfortable. The puddle wasn't flowing as, as nicely as I wanted it to. So I think I may revert back to uh, just having full control with the foot pedal with 60, 60 amps uh, full pedal. And also, I don't need to back off with quite as much copper sheet as what I had before. So I've cut a small section off and I've also got a piece of timber which I've drawn the curvature of the tank on. And we're just going to use that to clamp it up tight against the back of the weld. I think that'll work a little bit better than what it has been doing. Might set fire to the wood. <laughs> I don't know. I might see if I can put some type of heat proof material on that curvature as well. Or maybe just maybe just build up with some more of this copper. I've got enough to play around with. It was cheap enough. So I'm going to set that up and we'll give it another try. Right, I've got really fancy now. So I've got the aluminium and the copper strips that uh, we've made previously and I sort of sandwiched them together. If you can see that, we just bent it round when she focuses and uh, yeah, she's clamped on there pretty tight. I've put some screw holes in, run it through the roller and she fitteth on top of here. Just countersunk the screws so we should get a nice tight fit. So there we have it. So that now is going to be the backing bar for inside the tanks. And once she's clamped up tight, I'm hoping that she will be a good a good prevention for the uh, for the coking. Now a slight modification to the uh, backing bar. What I've done is taken out, I put three screws in there, I've taken them out and I've just put the one screw at the top and over bent the inside and that gives me then a bit of flex on the inside of the tank. So when I push it up, if there's any gap, 
that should be taken up by the flex within there and it's sort of hinging like a like a van suspension spring should push up nicely and then there's also a bit of a gap between the timber and the aluminium hopefully allowing a bit of cooling to go on there and not set my timber on fire centre it over the, the seam make sure it's square couple of clicks Oh, that's wonderful. couldn't get comfortable running a bead. Let's try it down here. So a good two, three hours under the hood. Yeah, quite a bit of welding there actually. Managed to get the outer edge done all the way. The backing bar held up quite well. You can see we've got one of them there doing its job. And uh, yeah, I'm really impressed. Probably saved me a fortune in Argon, that has. And this, folks, is the seam that we've just finished. And without a doubt, I'm getting much better. Finger for comparison, look how tiny that weld is, nice and tight. I'm extremely happy about how it's all turning out. I just need to cut a back plate for that now, and then roll it and tack it on, weld it all the way around. And I've also got this top ring to finish welding, this, uh, this section here. But we're just about out of argon again, believe it or not. That's three bottles I've got through. I think mainly this is due to the amount of back purging that I did on the previous tanks. So hopefully now I've got these backing bars, that should save me moving forwards. A little bit of argon on the other tanks. I was just setting up to make myself a cup of coffee. Now, when Gemma came in earlier on, she said, oh, I've brought you some pot noodles for your lunch. Look at this. The pot noodle tower. This is not product placement, is it? Right, Stu's just brought me a, a letter down that we've had sent to the brew shed. There's the address if you want to mail us. And uh, it's from a subber. Just make sure you don't say, don't read this out. So, Chris, I'm a long time subscriber to your YouTube channel. I was not for six when I found out what had been, what had been laid upon you by your former colleagues. You're a top decent bloke, and it's yourself and the likes of Big Sir Q, Brewmaster Ben, Don Osborne, and of course the one and only Craig, whom got me serious into brewing. That's not Craig Marsh. Uh, I have a small business myself. You can find me on Facebook at SJD Creations Fine Bespoke Joinery check it out, where you can contact me easily and my website may have a few items on there that also could catch your eye. As I know you're very creative, anyhow, I've cut a few decals for you to have a look at and I could only do your channel logo as I couldn't convert the brew shed or Harrison's into a good enough vector to cut. I've also thrown in a few of my own designs, which I'm sure you'll recognise. If the decals are something you'd like, then drop me a line, mate, on Facebook or email and we'll have a chat about stuff. One little business to a potential brewing giant. Cracking to see you marching on. And not that far away from an even bigger and better brewery. Once bitten, twice shy, all the best fella, Darren. Cheers, Darren. Let's have a look at the decals. Also, we've got a bottle cap with 17 on it. Harry Brew 69 decal and a bigger one. So where are we gonna stick these bad boys? Car window. In car window? I don't know, but they look really good. Cheers, mate. There she is, lads and lasses. What do you think to her? So, pickling and polishing, I can do when I've got all these tanks ready. I'll have just a big blast on it, I think. But looking at this, she is, uh, I'm stood quite far back, you know, to get this in. I'm stood a good two metres back. 
She's looking impressive, right? Yeah, she's looking damn good. So this is obviously the back. The jacket sits on the left hand side. I'll try and do that for all of them now. Try and match it up so they all look symmetrical. It runs just to the front there and then on this, this is the front, so this is the front view, which is the cleanest section. Just here, we'll have a takeoff port and then we should only be losing about 25 litres or so in that bottom cone. Well, they say all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Well, my name's not Jack, but I've been in here since nine o'clock this morning and it's Baltic, as you probably know with the weather that's going on around the country at the minute. So I'm going into the brew shed for A, a warm, and B, a pint. Oh, oh, a baby. Oh, a baby. <laughs> To those of you who don't know, there's no continuity there because this is my third pint. <laughs> That's the end of tonight, boys. Gemma's here to pick me up. Look how chuffed Dominic is to see us. Right, I managed to have two or three beers after work. A rare treat in the brew shed, anyway. I often have a few at home. But, uh, that's about as much as we're going to get done today guys, so we're going to sign off and we'll see you tomorrow.